I think it's, it's a good evening, yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a very special edition of Khmer Thang Cross Talk. This is, this is the second episode this year. And again, I'm happy to see you. And today, we are having with us in our studio today, we have Dr. Ching Wan Rut. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Yeah, great, great. great Thank yes. you for having me here. Yeah. How 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 how's the schedule so far? Uh, right. busy as usual. Yeah. Yeah, but manageable. Manageable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what we are talking about today is the Cambodian is Cambodian foreign policy in the new era. Last year, last year, let me remind you. Last year, we have uh, Cambodia has a very special year. Had a very special year. We held the ASEAN chairmanship. Yeah, mm. the rotating rota 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 chairs ASEAN. We hosted the uh, forty and 41st ASEAN Summit and other related meeting in Phnom Penh. It was, to me, it was amazing, an mm. amazing achievement. We were praised, mm. the Cambodian government were praised, was praised for its um, hospitality um, arrangement and stuff. But at the same time, there are, there are, some people say there are still a few hiccups mm -hmm. you know, within, all, within all these achievements. Mm -hmm. So how about you? How do you rate Cambodian, Cambodian uh, Cambodia's uh, foreign policy in hmm. 2022. Well, uh, I, as you said, uh, it, it, it is a, a great achievement in terms of a chairmanship of ASEAN. It's not easy to host uh, this kind of high-level summits and meetings uh, within the context of intensifying uh, geopolitical rivalries and you know the war in Ukraine, uh, pandemic still ongoing and recovery and of course the tension across the straits and uh, uh, the Myanmar uh, political crisis and so on. So, so many issues on the plate, so, so many hot issues on the plate and Cambodia managed to uh, promote this kind of uh, frank and open dialogue um, and also to promote a certain degree of mutual understanding and trust. Uh, between different uh, stakeholders, is basically between major powers. Um, of course, the, you know, the Cambodian foreign policy has been very consistent in terms of promoting this, what we call a, a rule-based international order mm -hmm. and an open, inclusive, multilateral system. So this is the important platform. And also uh, a kind of a, a, a space for Cambodia to amplify uh, her voices and also to increase its uh, geopolitical weight and geoeconomic weight as well because starting from last year, early last year, January, uh, we uh, start, started enforcing regional comprehensive economic partnership and, uh, and other regional kind of economic arrangement initiative to boost our regional economy in the context of post-COVID-19 uh, recovery. Yes. However, um, we, we, we had we have, uh, I'm sure Cambodia, Cambodia, especially by Mr. Hun Sen, has started 2022 with a, a, with a lot of initiatives mm -hmm. in terms of um, the stopping the violence in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Yes, but we, 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 uh, the, the government has sent a special invoice mm -hmm. um, for the minister to, to Myanmar to mm -hmm. try to talk mm -hmm. with all parties and then um, Try to stop the violence. Try to de deliver the the humanitarian aid to mm -hmm. the suffering people. Mm -hmm. But still, the fighting is still going on. Do you blame mm -hmm. Cambodia for this? Can we really blame Cambodia for this? Well, Myanmar political crisis is very structurally, historically complex. Um, I don't think anyone can provide solution to Myanmar crisis. Uh, so we we need to to have this kind of a incremental process of engagement. Not isolation, obviously, um, because the, we, we don't uh, see any opportunity of using sanctions and isolations to make a difference uh, in, in Myanmar, so through engagement. But uh, this engagement, you need to be innovative in a way, uh, carrot and stick at the same time, uh, pressure also we need to use. And, and of course, it, it's up on the Myanmar people themselves to decide their future and their destiny. Uh, what we can do at most is to provide platform for dialogue, inclusive political dialogue, uh, whether it can lead to the cessation of violence or end of violence, 
uh, it depends on different stakeholders in Myanmar. But what we can do is provide platform, facilitate dialogues. And of course, you mentioned the humanitarian uh, assistance. That, that is one of the key achievements uh, because Cambodia uh, kind of prioritized this kind of uh, humanitarian uh, assistance to, to Myanmar, which is quite remarkable last year. So this year, uh, we don't know um, what going to happen, but our solution is still quite remote. Uh, Indonesia chairmanship, uh, to what extent it could deliver this kind of uh, concrete, effective uh, results of the five-point consensus, yeah. because it seems that uh, the political trust between Indonesia and Myanmar is quite quite a problem. Uh, it can be worse than, than last year, uh, but let's see. Let's see how how Indonesia are going to handle the Myanmar crisis this year. Yes, in in 2022, as many people pointed out. Uh, Cambodia has, I, I'm sure Cambodia has performed, has displayed very good initiatives in you know, building good diplomatic, building new diplomatic mm -hmm. relations with nations, mm -hmm. uh, like Ukraine, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, during, the, during the ASEAN summit last year, uh, Cambodia led ASEAN to signing Ukraine into the TAC, the Treaty mm -hmm. of Amity and Cooperation in mm -hmm. Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about this? Well. Uh, uh, it's also a remarkable achievement of ASEAN when it comes to external partnership building. So uh, a number of countries outside the region signed uh, the TAC. Uh, that is an illustration of the recognition of the important role of ASEAN in maintaining peace, stability and promote shared prosperity and development. So Ukraine uh, is quite a uh, kind of interesting case here because we see the context of uh, the war in Ukraine, for instance. So, ASEAN, of course, not all ASEAN member states uh, have condemned Russia invasion. But Cambodia is one of the <laughs> kind of, uh, co sponsor and uh, one of the strong opponent to uh, the violation of international law. Yes. Of course, Cambodia's position is very clear. Uh, uh, it does, doesn't take sides uh, in the war. Uh, this is a basic fundamental foreign policy, but Cambodia takes side with the international law. So the benchmark here is this rule-based international law and especially the UN Charter. So any violation of the UN Charter, Cambodia will take a strong position to condemn those uh, acts. Yes. The first day of 2020, uh, 2023, we completed, Cambodia has completed its chairmanship, ASEAN chairmanship and after a hand and it, it handed uh, the, the honor to Indonesia. Still, we got the uh, we got uh, we got the, we got amplified. Cambodia got amplified in twenty twenty two because of the ASEAN chairmanship, the very mm -hmm. chairmanship. How about this year? And until the next until the next chairmanship, until the, the next Cambodian chairmanship, I think that ten ten years uh, ten years later, maybe ten maybe eleven years, if mm. not more, let's say joining ASEAN or not. So. Um, mm. In this period, in this period, how what can what can Cambodia do to you know to to have its voice heard in the world to to see, contribute to various issues mm. in the international affairs? Well, of course, last year was a, a challenging year for Cambodia. Also, opportunity for Cambodia to illustrate uh, its uh, kind of diplomatic capacity and leadership in navigating ASEAN. Uh, toward a, a more, how to say, a more stable and united in, in terms of response thing to uh, current challenges. Uh, this year, of course, uh, we're going to have Sea Game, uh, which is uh, one of the event highlight event of the year, and uh, Southeast Asia Summit of Red Cross. Uh, so those are kind of international events uh, that Cambodia is going to organize this year. Um, but uh, the message will be the same, uh, will be consistent. That is the a kind of a, a responsibility of Cambodia as a member of ASEAN and as a member of international community. You need to do something to contribute to international peace and development prosperity. And there are different ways to promote peace and development, either through sport or through uh, humanitarian assistance or humanitarian innovation, cooperation, or this kind of multi stakeholder partnership. So, you know. Uh, Cambodia still continue playing very active role on regional and international matters. 
uh, and of course uh, under the framework of the UN, as you know, uh, uh, the UN peacekeeping forces uh, cam from Cambodia have contributed a lot to world peace and stability. And the Women Peace and Security Agenda, which adopted here in Phnom Penh last year, uh, the Re Regional Action Plan on Women Peace Security Agenda, will be continued uh, to implement it uh, this year and uh, in, the, in the future. So that one of the key highlights from my personal point of view, I mean, is the women empowerment in in all fields, in uh, business, in security. Mm -hmm. So, to, so that Cambodia have have promoted that that front quite significantly last year, uh, because the, at the ASEAN Defense Minister meeting, they uh, adopted concept paper on uh, uh, the to the establish mechanism to support women peacekeeper from Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. and increase the quota, uh, the number of uh, women peacekeepers, and how to build their capacity and create a support network to, uh, in order to enable women peacekeepers to, you know, to fulfill their tasks. So those are some of the key highlights. And uh, as you know, the ASEAN Green Deal, yeah. of course, uh, we don't have a concept paper yet or action plan on that. But that is the, a vision uh, initiated by Cambodia last year. And I think from this year onward, uh, maybe the regional country need to or uh, Indonesia as the chair ASEAN to keep working together with Cambodia need to de develop a more concrete action plan and concept note on ASEAN Green Deal because this is something that I think it will help ASEAN to recover from the pandemic in a very resilient and green uh, uh, manner. And this is a no new opportunity for regional economy when we invest more in green technology uh, and green financing, green business and so on. Yes. We have I'm sure we have the great initiatives. We have a mm. uh, very big uh, vision ahead of us. Mm. However, when it comes to human resources, mm -hmm. do you think do you think Cambodia has enough of that to to put all the plan, all of the schemes into action? Well, uh, it's never be sufficient in terms of human resources. You need to keep developing human capital all the time mm -hmm. because issue change all the time, the dynamic change all the time. So we need to keep uh, improving the skills of uh, our human resources, keep building the skill and talents, you know, um, in a enabling environment to uh, have our young leaders to realize their potential. So uh, human capital development is never end and the process is ongoing process and uh, to uh, achieve this kind of task uh, huge task uh, in uh, foreign affairs and diplomacy for instance uh, we need uh, to have a whole of government approach it's not only the ministry of foreign affairs to be in charge but i think other government agencies uh, need to be in uh, to be in charge of promoting this kind of cambodian image uh, uh, and then to diversify partnership and to implement hedging, what we call hedging strategy. So we need to, the, to have a, a whole of government approach here, uh, coordinated uh, uh, agencies uh, and multi-stakeholder partnership and so on. So uh, to, respond in, to respond to your question, uh, we, don't, we never have enough human resources. We always lack human capital because the global and regional national issue keep changing very fast and we need to find the root causes of, and of course innovative solutions to that. Okay. Let me point out mm. one aspect of that, diplomatics. Mm. Okay. Do we have, think about as the president of the ASEAN version is, institute, you, I'm sure you have worked with a lot of mm. diplomats. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel about Cambodian diplomats mm. in terms of their qualification, negotiation skill and so on and so forth? How do you feel about uh, the, 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 this level of Cambodian diplomats? Uh, this is uh, a remarkable improvement in terms of uh, professionalism and capacity uh, over the past, let's say, five years, um, because the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, established uh, a training institute called uh, National Institute of Diplomacy and International Relations. Mm -hmm. So that pro kind of provides a training space and opportunity and capacity building to uh, uh, diplomats across different generation, different age, you know, from young to senior uh, member of uh, diplomatic corps. And of course, um, uh, we have uh, various think tanks working uh, across Cambodia on uh, foreign policy and provide uh, doing this kind of platform for dialogue, conversation, and, and our media are also 
pay quite significant uh, attention to international issue and foreign policy, which is good. Um, because as a small country, you need to have more information of international and uh, regional you know, uh, environment, you know, situation, what's going on there, because you are so small. Uh, so you need to understand and you need to be prepared for, for the future. It's good that you mentioned Cambodia being small. I'm sure they are smaller countries, yes. Yeah. Uh, but Cambodia is still small. In mm. the, and sometimes is a uh, we are like how can you say it? Just like we are. Sometimes we could be in in some scenarios we can be in the land of giants. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of superpowers right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sure people can can say thinking about them. But for me, I'm sure like they are like confronting one another mm -hmm. for influence and for the sphere of influence mm -hmm. in, in, in the globe right now. Yeah. So as a, let's say as someone small in the land of someone or someone to, or someone so big, mm. how should Cambodian act? How should Cambodian formulate its uh, foreign policy? Well, uh, this is a kind of common constraint for small state or weak state or weaker states. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, we, we need this kind of a, how we call a smart, either smart diplomacy or um, independent foreign policy together with this concept of if we can play certain role on international issues, right? Of course, we have limited resources. We cannot focus on many issues, but just pick one or two issues that we have this kind of competitive advantage, such as uh, women peacekeeping forces and you know, this kind of peacekeeping. Mm -hmm. Or another tool would be, let's say, if you are very keen in promoting this climate diplomacy, you know. So we, we need to have a selling point. Uh, we, have, we have to find something to sell at the international stage as a small, so that uh, we make our voice heard and we stay relevant. So as a small state, uh, try to be at the table, otherwise you'll be, you'll be in the menu, right? And uh, the swing is is very intense now uh, because of geopolitical competition. But we cannot avoid the win from this geopolitical competition or the headwinds and the pressure and so on. But we need to have a very deep roots, you know, uh, so that we become more resilient. And how to build a deep root? We need national unity, uh, national consensus, uh, also uh, this kind of. Uh, opportunities for all because anyway economics still determine politics right uh, so if we are not economically independent uh, economically strong and resilient uh, politically we are not that independent right because economic determine politics so so that is why uh, we need to improve uh, the foundation for economic security uh, 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 so that it can help us to stay independent we are we are talking about the superpowers here. That pick two, uh, mm. we have China and we have the U.S., the United States, mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. um, it's a scale here. Mm. It's a balance. Do you see a balance? Do you see the uh, a balance mm -hmm. in uh, Cambodian uh, foreign policy toward the two superpowers here? Well, it depends on how you define balance. Uh, balance in a way of a, a stable equilibrium. Uh, because um, we cannot have 50-50 uh, when it comes to this kind of uh, proximity or engagement strategy. So uh, uh, at, at, as long as we can maintain this kind of stable partnership, for instance, that no major power will uh, would regard us as a, a proxy of another major power, or no other major power, let's say, wish to see regime change in, in a certain country, small state like Cambodia, then we can call we they have a, a stable equilibrium or engagement with all major power. But 50-50 is very difficult, and I think it's impossible for any small state now to have 50-50 relation with, let's say, uh, between China and the U.S. Maybe at most they can do, let's say, 60s and 40, right? So at least, uh, but it's still we call it still a balance or stable, but not absolutely kind of. By 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 meaning fifty fifty that they have absolute kind of a balance or equilibrium. Yes. So let me turn to I turn to another page. Um, but it's come. I think in Southeast Asia, mm. in Southeast Asia, historical antagonism, for example, mm -hmm. like 
it's it's still it's still here. Yeah, people uh-huh. still mean, still hate one another. Uh-huh. Uh, people are people are different uh-huh. nations who used to be a past enemy still hate uh-huh. one another, and, and it's just not happening in Cambodia. It's happening in Malaysia. It's not happening in Indonesia. It's uh-huh. happening in like uh, the, all over the world. Let's say, but uh, do you think do you, do you see this uh, the historical antagonism like uh-huh. like Cambodian people and the Vietnamese people and Cambodian people and the Thai people? Uh-huh. Some of them still hate one another. Do you, do you view this as a as a challenge and should should uh, Cambodian government in, implant this into its its foreign policy during the uh, formulate formulating phase? Well, uh, nationalism is a two-edged sword, right? It can be positive and can be also negative forces. If we don't manage nationalism in a positive way, it become extreme nationalism or ultra-nationalism. And historical antagonism has been quite common in international relations because most of uh, political leaders, they tend to uh, refer to the past uh, because really the past defines the present and the future also. Uh, but uh, through this kind of uh, interdependence and interconnectedness, uh, we can reduce a lot of this kind of historical antagonism. With, uh, for, in- for instance, within the Southeast Asian context, mm-hmm. the ASEAN community building, we try to promote this common vision, common identity. Uh, without ASEAN, perhaps, I think uh, the border wars, skirmishes between ASEAN members, Southeast Asian country, I think it may be very high. But ASEAN provide a platform for this kind of consultation, dialogue, trust building, and so on, reconciliation. So now, if you look at uh, this kind of historical antagonism, let's say against neighbors, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's in decline right, uh, across Southeast Asia. Uh, because we get to know each other better. Uh, because this kind of uh, historical antagonism, because of the lack of understanding of your neighbors. So if you, let's say, if you hate certain country, you go there and live there to understand their society, culture, and history, and mindsets, and you come back home and you reflect. Uh, you know, so so that is the best way to promote mutual understanding. So be uh, people movement. Uh, educational exchange, cultural exchange, and so on. Uh, so, so that uh, I think what's going on in the, in Southeast Asia can can be now a positive trend toward a more of common identity building. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you, it's called you, sp- you mentioned ASEAN. Mm. Yes, for the first time ever, I think this year we have someone from Cambodia being the um, general secretary mm. of ASEAN. Yes, mm. uh, Mr. Kakap uh, Um how do you feel about this? How, 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 how do you see this, having someone from Cambodia holding the, the top position in ASEAN? Mm. Well, uh, of course, it's the first time the Cambodian have its uh, Secretary General in ASEAN. Uh, of course, um, uh, within these five years, it's not easy for ASEAN, especially Secretary General, to navigate this kind of very dangerous and very uncertain uh, that's a geopolitical environment. Uh, it will be a challenging uh, five years term for Cambodia, but also a kind of opportunity for Cambodian diplomat to uh, illustrate his leadership and capacity. Uh, because every crisis uh, always brings uh, opportunities uh, uh, as well. And, and of course, it's something that we should be proud of uh, as a Cambodia, but uh, we, we, we need to see the actual results and outcomes uh, and of course the the survival and the vibrancy and robustness of ASEAN it's not only depend on the Secretary General of ASEAN but all the member states so he need to get the support from the all the 10 member states or 11 member states if Timor Leste was admitted uh, going to be admitted in, in coming years so so that that is something that he need to work on is to facilitate uh, uh, dialogue, consultation, and to build consensus. So building consensus is a very important capacity and skill as a Secretary General of ASEAN. It's not easy, uh, but uh, uh, let, let's see how, how he going to uh, facilitate and build consensus. Okay. Consensus, <laughs> very, very beautiful word, mm-hmm. but some view it as controversial. Mm. Uh, because of this, because of this uh, particular word, Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people refer to ASEAN as a paper as a paper tiger. Mm-hmm. But do you see that? Is you know in this new era, mm-hmm. in this new era, 
where information flows at the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. um, do you think ASEAN is really a, really a special uh, uh, paper tiger? Uh, it uh, depends on how you see ASEAN, but uh, you need to look at the outcomes mm -hmm. uh, on the ground. So you need to look at the facts on the ground, how ASEAN has delivered. And you need to put in a scenario that if without ASEAN, uh, how, uh, how the region would evolve without ASEAN. Any better alternative uh, to ASEAN? So we need to ask those questions. Um, of course, ASEAN is not perfect organization. A lot of shortcoming loopholes and a lot of things need, need to be improved in terms of capacity, in terms of uh, engagement, multi-stakeholder partnership building, of resources mobilization, mm -hmm. and so on. Because um, ASEAN still, you know, at the uh, stage of of uh, need to to um, engage more uh, the grassroots people, the people, because it it's still uh, largely elitist to some extent, uh, and without having much voices from the grassroots, from the bottom up level in terms of institutional building. Anyway, um, I'm I'm very optimistic of ASEAN uh, because I'm looking at the past and how it has been evolving and uh, the future trend uh, but of course we need to build a lot of uh, capacity when it comes to let's say ASEAN Secretariat uh, we need to have more resources more funding mm -hmm. because the funding very small to support ASEAN Secretariat and recruit more talents uh, to work at the ASEAN Secretariat and um, of course to, to be more effective in response to crisis either it's a natural crisis or man-made crisis so we need to be more responsive of course, the all mechanisms are there, but we need decisive leadership. We need more resources. Let go a step higher. Mm. We are, we, previously, we are talking about ASEAN, we mm. talk about the UN. Mm. Um, yes, because we are we are one of the voters in the mm. gen, uh, in the UN General uh, General Assembly. Mm. Yes. Um, earlier, earlier last year, we vote again the uh, russia invasion mm -hmm. in in ukraine mm -hmm. so basically we said we are using Cambodian government say we are uh, they are using the international law mm -hmm. to base uh, to base their vote mm -hmm. you know but at the same time so you know sometimes people do not vote because of international law sometimes mm -hmm. they vote for their favor for mm -hmm. their own national mm -hmm. interest mm -hmm. so in this new era mm -hmm. what what should we weak position should Cambodia head into national interests or international laws? Well, as I said earlier, um, for small state like Cambodia, we need to rely on international law mm -hmm. to protect ourselves, our interests, our security, territorial integrity. So we need to be consistent. Uh, if you are not consistent, you cannot earn trust and credibility. So consistency is very important and uh, principle-based foreign policy is also important. Of course, uh, within the principle based foreign policy, uh, we also need to have a room for flexibility sometime. Uh, but in this case, I, I think it's, uh, it's a, a clear position in Cambodia because we used to have border skirmishes and border war with Thailand. What we did at that time is to reach the, the, uh, the we approached the international court of justice. Yes. <laughs> so we rely on international law to solve our territorial disputes. But at the same time, for example, we still mm. owe Russia m millions of dollars. Uh. Yeah, but then we vote you know, like in favor of Ukraine. Uh. When it comes to scenario like this, <laughs> you well, see any way out? We, we need to be clear between uh, gratitude and international law or principle. Perhaps uh, we need to balance also, but I think Cambodia have chosen uh, international law. Uh, our gratitude. Of course, uh, Cambodian have deep gratitude to a Russian friend uh, for the support in the past and the present and also in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but uh, perhaps Russia need to understand Cambodia's worldview and position as well and don't use it to, uh, how to say, to derail our diplomatic uh, path and cooperation. We, we have still have a lot of room to cooperate with Russia on many other fields. Uh, so we, we should not use these uh, differences to our shadow, our comprehensive cooperation with Russia. Yeah. So now, in the new year, um, we are heading for the future. Mm -hmm. at, at the same time, what reforms 
you do you think should be placed when it comes to uh, the foreign policy formulation? Mm -hmm. Let's check the, that the reform that the, 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 the diploma, the cabinet diplomats and government should embrace in order mm. to, be, to, to, to have better foreign policies. Well, what I can say is uh, uh, it's on the right path. The foreign policy direction orientation uh, is on the right path. Uh, the challenge is how to maintain the momentum, mm -hmm. uh, how to maintain the leadership, leadership style, quality, and so on, and the professionalism of the diplomat need to be improved and capacity also. And now we're talking about, let's say, cyber diplomacy or digital diplomacy. Mm -hmm. So how can our diplomat, let's say, can use digital platform to advance certain agenda? Uh, how can we negotiate better? Uh, how we can have more partners in the region and the world at large? Uh, and how to build, when it comes to cyber security, is how, how to build a, a, a more inclusive, open, let's say, and rule-based cyber governance system that can protect the interests of small countries like Cambodia. The, this kind of global cyber governance regime, so Cambodia needs to contribute something to that building because we are entering a new world order and we don't know what kind of new world order we are building or we are, it will, it leading to. No one really knows, but at least we have some say and uh, be more active and proactive in this process. And that's why we need to be uh, uh, prepared for the future, mm -hmm. uh, prepare for future scenario, a different scenario, and uh, be responsive and effective in decision making. And of course, keep building the human resources in foreign policy. Now, last but not least, <coughs> let's look at our let look, look mm -hmm. let look at our young people here. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are, there are a lot of topics they are talking about, chatting about, gossiping about. But I'm sure one, one mm. issue they may not know about, but they may not be familiar mm. with, is mm. foreign policy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's Cambodian reaction, engagement in, uh, in, with other countries. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they may be... Uh, this is what I observed mm. um, from my observation. They don't, mm. they don't talk about this. They don't discuss mm. this. Mm -hmm. and so you, do you think how, how can we you know, push them to, to learn more about this? Interaction, interaction, engagement, foreign policy of Cambodia. Well, it, it is a common problem everywhere in the world. You know, even in the U.S., not not many people are interested in foreign policy, right? Yeah. Uh, the common people. Uh, so we, we need to uh, inform them why why does it matter, especially for small state like Cambodia. We you, we need to understand our neighbors, uh, our region, and the world, and uh, explore opportunities because. If we just focus on Cambodia to explore opportunities here, then we uh, cannot be competitive and we cannot run long. Or, you know, if you want to run long and run far, you need to understand your neighbors, uh, understand the world and how we can adapt and uh, explore the surrounding environment, you know, uh, explore opportunities available out there so that we can stay ahead of the curve, stay competitive. Uh, so that people will start to have more interest in foreign policy and international issue because if we are connect to their livelihood and their career opportunity and also interest. So we need to understand because we are small states. Mm -hmm. So if it's a small state, you need to understand your neighbors. It's a matter of necessity. How about those youngsters who want to become diplomat when they grow up? Those those who want to you know engage to want to help Cambodia become bigger, having the voice heard in international. In, in international affair in the in the in the world of spheres as influence, how could they prepare? How could they prepare for this role for these well, positions? Uh, you don't need to work in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to become a diplomat. You know, yeah. all of us can be diplomats. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, how you can uh, promote your identity as Cambodian, for instance. How you can promote your products. Do you support your products, uh, made in Cambodia products, right? And how to promote it overseas and our cultural identity and cultural products and so on. So those are part of the uh, diplomacy already, you know, uh, how to promote uh, your country. So everyone can be part of this process and uh, because we, are, we need to uh, make our neighbors and international friends know better uh, who we are and our potential and what we can work together to uh, explore opportunities. Yes. 
I think that's all for my question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Th thank you. For being here today. Uh, I'm sure we learned a lot from this very, very insightful interview. So <coughs> that's it, viewers. That's all for our session today. And I would like to thank Dr. Chen Wanert for, you know, this insightful information. And I hope you learned something from this. And maybe, you know, one day make Cambodian better in the world. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that's it. And see you next week.